<laughs> Today we're looking, talking, doing the bird dog row. What is the bird dog row? You got one leg out, the opposite hand is rowing. So, kind of like I'm a bird dog, but instead of pointing forward with my hand, like so, I extend out with the leg and I'm rowing. Doesn't get much simpler than that, right? That's where you might be wrong. Because in the bird dog row, we're looking to do more than just row. Yes, there's a row happening up front. There's a half a bird dog happening in the back. What does that make happen here? Right? You got to connect. Shoulder to opposite hip, front side, back side, all that stuff. Why? Because on the bottom side, or the front side here, the hand that's on the ground and the leg that's on the ground, they got to talk a little bit. The further stretched out you are, the more they have to talk across your core. The more underneath you, wrist, elbow, shoulder lined up. Let's do it on this side. Knee and hip on top of each other. The little more stable it is, but you already make it unstable by lifting the one leg and then rowing with the opposite hand. So on the front side, we're looking for stability here. On the back side, we got an isometric happening when the leg is straight and then the row happening. So we're getting movement there. We got stability where we don't want to move, movement where we're moving. So we get both sides. Front side stabilizes here. Back side, we get the glute. Opposite side, we get the upper back. We're rowing up and down. This is the simplest version of the bird dog row. That's where we're starting looking at it. On the ground, no other balance challenges included like a wobbly board under this, propped up on a bench. You can do all sorts of things. We're going to add a few here in a moment, but we're looking at the basic version because that's where we're going to talk and you can feel all those things happening without the added stress or distractions of the instabilities, et cetera, et cetera. Speaking of stability and instability, this is not an opportunity to row as heavy as possible. You can certainly challenge it by rowing more, but if you want to row as heavy as possible, doing the forearm supported single arm row or support on a bench single arm row there are machines out there for rowing bilateral symmetrical asymmetrical unilateral those are great opportunities to move as much weight as possible for muscular development for strength this is an opportunity to get things talking to challenge balance and stability to challenge coordination a little bit you can add movement to it but that's what we want to do here. This isn't an absolute strength exercise. This is a coordinated strength exercise in the face of an unstable platform of your body, taking two legs off of that table. So here, again, hand, knee, get out, get stable, pack the shoulder, brace the abs. So the shoulder of the downside, pack and push into the ground a little bit. Pack, push into the ground a little bit. That's gonna create the stability and activation here. Brace the abs like you're doing a plank. That's gonna connect the two. And you can't really push, I mean you could, but you don't really focus on pushing into the ground with that support knee. The squeeze of the top leg, the glute, helps kind of level the hips out and get some stability there. So again, we're going to pack, push, brace and shorten. I extend out and squeeze, and then I row here. That being said, you can move a little weight, especially once you get used to it. Pack, push, brace, squeeze, row, and don't let it disconnect you. Row and down. Row and down. So you can challenge that with weight. What about the range of motion? I know that's what you're going to say. What about the range of motion? Stretch mediated hypertrophy. Well, again, this isn't the exercise I would use if I wanted to gain some muscle in that area, maybe as a warm up to get into it. But you could always go to a dumbbell. So your hand has to go further down for the row. Or start to bring in things like a bench or a rogue block or a aerobic step so that you could then gain a bigger range of motion here. Also, with a bench, with a narrower base, the width of it, it's going to challenge your stability a little bit more. You can certainly grip the edge of the bench. You can grip the backside with your toes or the top of your foot. 
But again, stability being the thing or one of the things we want to challenge in this, maybe don't do that. Plant your palm flat on this, have your foot dangling off the back, and then you're rowing in a more challenged position. A very simple way to challenge stability here would be for me to narrow, just like kind of had to happen on the bench, my base so that instead of my wrist, elbow, and shoulder being lined up and knee and hip being lined up, now my knee is inside of my hip, my hand is inside of my shoulder, and that's going to create a little narrower base for you to have to stabilize more as you lift this weight without that leg on the ground. If we're talking stability, we could always challenge it more by getting something squishy and wobbly underneath us. Squishy here is like an Airx pad, both the hand and the knee that are on them will wiggle a little bit. So that makes me have to stabilize a little more. If you're going to do that, the back toes of the support foot being off the ground takes away some of that stability. Simple ways, you should start with those first, narrow your base a little bit, add some range of motion, but maybe not with too narrow of a base. Then you can start adding all the bells and whistles. You can add a weight to your back foot in the form of an ankle weight that makes that back glute have to work a little harder to stabilize. You can hang a kettlebell off your ankle with some rubber bands and you can kick that leg around as you're rowing like you're having convulsions of some sort. Really challenge stability. You could even turn it into the dumbest parlor trick anyone's ever seen. Just remember why you're doing it. For likes on Instagram or for stability, or for activation's sake, so that when you need to tighten and move something heavy in the weight room, or in the real world, or in the real gym world, one of those, you've prepped your body, prepped your mind, prepped your muscles by practicing with challenges to your stability while pulling a thing that you can increase incrementally. Build skills and communication between your muscles that you can apply elsewhere in and out of the gym. So give the bird dog row a shot.